to my mom, who's in the middle. <laughs> Second, to all of the friends and, and everybody who has supported me over the past couple of years, uh, encouraging me to keep writing, to keep performing, to everybody who is out celebrating with us on Tuesday night, sorry I'm wearing the same jacket, I don't have that many dressy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the first poem I'm going to do for you is called What You Never Taught Me, and it's about growing up queer and having a lot of teachers never talk about queer things in school. Uh, and hoping that I can do better. You never taught me that anyone actually cared about my happy ending. You never taught me that the way to make love was deeper than my anatomy textbook. You never taught me that the rhythm in my heart's restarted bones comes from a deeper pulse, one that is more nature than nurture, because nurture was torture. Torture you stamped into me like a Bible verse tattooed on my virginity and glued to the you you wanted me to see. I am the me in me and that is enough. You never told me that my prince would come, lest he become she, gender reassignment, chromosomal, extra excellent, celebration of the feminine. I saw a man and woman, Adam and Eve, and Bible bread, butter reality, in my face, Cosmopolitan magazine proclaims 60 ways to please your man, Romeo and Juliet normalcy. I never understood, maybe it wasn't for me to see, how A and B doesn't always equal C, a bird's and B's reality. And the butterflies and pride fairies and I have no place in your centerfold. My fairy tale untold, not bought nor sold, not even a draft on the Cosmo storyboard. December 11th, 2009 became alive when her lips touched mine and I liked it. And I found my happy ending ever after, heard Carrie, Katy Perry's laughter. I'll tell you that much. Caught in the middle of religion and belief, I wonder where our faith comes from. Because it's not from that holy book unless it's the book ends of the bed sheets we find ourselves between. You never taught me that Butch is beautiful, that the white picket fence is overrated. I know it doesn't make sense to you because you're Juliet wed, but can you keep your Bible out of my bed? Because the prophets read the signs of the times and sociologists say it happens, it's fine, and the psychologist doesn't even call it a mental illness any longer. And I find myself in a sacred space, holy and true, and my own Lady Grace. And someday, you can write my fairy tale, too. Thank you, thank you. So my second poem is about Day of Silence this year. And for those of you who don't know what it is, Day of Silence is when people in our Boston College community and all across the uh, United States uh, choose not to speak for a day, to understand and to commemorate people whose voices have been taken from them, people who have been silenced because of bullying. And this poem is dedicated to a girl named Amelia, who is somewhere on our campus, but I don't know where she is. Silence. The voice is a powerful and precious thing. With it, we can share, celebrate, and heal, sometimes robbed, often misplaced, in some space between now and later, and still we press on. With questions and worries and stories in the pace of this world, we make haste to speak. It is in these times that the voice is a million more things with silence. The yes and no black and white paradigm that plagues the labels of gay and straight, religious and not, right and wrong, rob us of the freedom to sing in color and ask the questions that break the chains, no constraints, for the day when we finally speak our mind. <clears throat> Duct tape is a solitary friend, waiting for this day to end as I sit here, eyes down, uncharacteristically withdrawn for an extrovert. Every nerve in my body alert for the second glances that linger just a second too long, but I guess that's what isolation feels like. For every high school queer who longs to know community, for every trans child whose gender just doesn't fit pink or blue cigar, for every teenager who's been told it's just a phase, I know it's hard. Everyone's staring, caring so much, but I promise you a haircut won't tell you anything about who I love and how and how hard. I'm waiting for this day of silence to end so I can stop being ignored. This is why we continue to stand, stand out in the open where you can see us stand up from the silence, out from the closets, so it's clear what silence says. Silence says I'm tired of waiting, tolerance is passive, compassion is no longer a privilege. I need you to actively affirm me in your prayers and politics and policy. Don't ask, don't tell, was repealed to let it no longer rule on this campus. We continue to 
can stand because silence speaks volumes.